for my eye checkup. I think that came in yesterday. Hmm, let me check the app. Uh... There it is. I can go see my doctor now. I swear, if I didn't have a healthcare plan, I wouldn't think to look out for myself. lately at the store and we almost didn't have time for my employees annual checkup 
good thing Medicare does on-site testing. We can continue with business as usual, and my employees don't have to do more work to get their health checked. Thank God for Medicare. I used to be able to do it all, but I'm too old to spend my time on long queues. That's aging for you, I suppose. Being able to do these tests at home brings me so much comfort. a long way in building a healthcare system that lives up to what we aim to be. To serve as the lifeline of our clients, a bridge to health. 35 years fueled by a desire to make healthcare affordable and accessible to everyone, inspired by the trust of our clients. our members to feel like they can enjoy their lives to the fullest, that they can give their best shot in pursuing their aspirations because they are in their best of health, and that they can take comfort in knowing that the health care they need is just within their reach. Thank you for entrusting your health to us. It's what we're here for. Okay, so happy Thursday to everyone. Thank you all for visiting today's webinar. So my name is Quaylin Lagos and I will be your host for today's talk. So first of all, I would like to greet Medicare happy 35th anniversary, 35 years of providing quality health care to everyone. So today we have a very interesting topic that sure all of you can relate. So we all know that many of us here, men or women, wanted to look good and of course to feel good. 
So I'm sure that many of us are attracted to trying different skincare essentials out there in the market. There are Korean brands, there are Western brands, but do you think that these skincare products fit your skin type? Or is using skincare products enough to maintain healthy skin? So to get to know more, Joining us this afternoon is a graduate of Doctor of Medicine from UP College of Medicine. She got her residency in Dermatology at Philippine General Hospital, and she is visiting consultant at the Medical City and a fellow of the Philippine Dermatological Society. So please help me welcome the head consultant of the Laser and Aesthetic Care Center, or the Skin and Body by Medicard, Dr. Butsi Alejandrino. Hi, Doc. Good afternoon. So again, um, good afternoon to everyone. I'm Dr. Butsi Alejandrino. I'm a dermatologist. I'm the head consultant at Medicard Skin and Body. Okay, so I was tasked today to give you a lecture. And so the lecture I'm giving is just a moment. Turn on also the, the pointer. And then, so my lecture is entitled Look Good, Feel Good, Our Skin and Its Health, a Skincare Primer. So hopefully my lecture today will um, uh, help you in choosing products and treatments that you are interested in, and it will help you um, fix your skincare regimen. Um, some of it will be a review, but um, hopefully you'll pick up something from this lecture. Okay. So a disclaimer, I'm a doctor first and foremost, but I'm also a teacher. So I was once a lecturer and preceptor at the medical schools in San Beda, um, Emilio Aguinaldo and Ateneo. I still am in Ateneo, and I'm an online learning partner of my son at present. So sorry if uh, I'll be very technical in some aspects. Um, if you have any questions later on, just let me know. So the content of my lecture is all about skin. There will be a little anatomy, a little physiology, a little pathology, a little pharmacology, and a little psychology, but just a little of all. So don't worry, it won't be anything difficult. So let's start. So we all know that the skin is the most external structure of the body. So it's like our armor. It defines our personal it's like an armor and a costume at the same time right it defines our personal appearance our individuality our concept of beauty and we all have different concepts of beauty it also defines our attitude and our personality um, I know there are some of us who don't care how they look or how their skin is but most of us do and so we are affected by bad hair days or bad skin days. So um, this is why it is important to have a skincare regimen. Um, our concept of beauty is different for everyone. Some people are happy with just clear skin. Some want smooth skin, glass-like, like a Korean. Some are just happy not to have pimples, not to have um, pigmentation, or not to have scars, and that's enough for them. Um, it, uh, it really doesn't matter what your concept of beauty is. Um, for my generation, there's an additional concept of beauty if that's not having wrinkles or having tight lifted skin filled out all in the right places. We all want to age gracefully, yes. But do we do nothing? Do we just let time take its toll? We wish we were all blessed, like Gloria Romero here. This is 70 years. Her career spans 70 years. We wish we were all blessed like her, that we would still look good um, 70 years later. No? Um, there's all, Yes, there is some wrinkles on her face. Yes, her hair is white, but she's still very beautiful. So what do we do? 
do we just age gracefully? Yes, there is um, the intrinsic factor in aging that where genes um, plays a factor. And we wish, yes, we were blessed. But there is that extrinsic factor, which is controllable. So do we just say, bahala na? Or do we acknowledge, acknowledge that we all need help? Even the most beautiful do. And most products and treatments do work. And it's never too late to start a skincare regimen. So let's go into a little anatomy. First, let's study the skin. So like I said, the skin is an organ. It actually is the largest organ of the body. It comprises 6% of the total adult body weight, very big. Its functions primarily is for protection. We all know that. So like I said, it's like an armor. And the one that protects us is this top layer. It's the epidermis. No? But it has many other functions. It's not just a uh, protective function. No? It also regulates our temperature. It regulates our water in the body and the excretion of waste in our body. And it is also a sensory organ. We know that the skin is the sense organ for touch. No? So we have all those nerves on the skin which serve as that. Structurally, structurally, we know that it is divided into three parts. The top part is the epidermis, and that's the protective layer. The dermis, which is the thickest part, has all those organs in it. And then you have the subcutaneous fat. The function of the epidermis, like we said, is protective. It is continually renewing. It is the one that exfoliates. It's the one that changes on a regular basis. Um, however, it is not like this. It is not, not stacked one cell over each other. Um, the skin is not structured that way. So if you look closely here, it's not like this. These are just the different cells are, um, that comprise the upper layer of the skin. It is more in a brick and mortar pattern. So for construction workers or those who know construction, it is layered interlaced so that um, it is more stable and also so that um, it actually prevents um, the water loss from the body. This structure is created such that there is decrease in transepidermal water loss. So that's another of its protective functions. The second layer, as I said, is the dermis. It has many important structures. It has almost all the important structures. It provides elasticity and suppleness to the skin, and it gives nutrition to the skin. It has all these parts. Now it has the blood vessels. That's where all the nutrition goes in and where the waste goes out. It has the oil gland and the oil gland is closely associated with the hair follicle. And they, they together will form your pore. And this unit, we call it the pilosebaceous unit, is especially, oh, sorry, is especially important in the pathology of acne. Then you have your sweat glands. So your sweat glands actually open directly to the skin surface. So very important, like I said, for temperature and water regulation. And then you have the nerves. These are the nerves. There are many nerves actually on the skin. This is an example of one. And um, there are nerves for pain, for itch, for temperature, for deep touch. So they're very important as well. But the bulk of the skin is made up of the fibers. And the fibers um, are the collagen and elastic fibers. The collagen fibers uh, make up 70% of the dermis. And they provide the strength to the dermis. Whereas the elastic fibers are the one that returns it to its normal configuration after being stretched. So this is the one that is damaged by solar radiation and degrades with age so that your skin becomes very lax and droopy and sagging and it doesn't go back to its original shape as fast. No? The subcutaneous fat or the third layer is a reserve energy supply. So it's not just that. It's something that most of us when we're young we hate 
because it's fat, no? But it cushions and protects, so it's very important as well. Without fat, it will be difficult for your um, muscles to move. No? It will just be skin and then muscle. And then it also gives us that very nice cosmetic effect. No, It's the one that gives curves to the skin. When you get older, you start to appreciate your fat because you start losing that. And I realized that I have a round face. I've always had a round face and I hated it when I was young. But as you get older, it becomes positive because when you start losing the fat, you start aging. So we have to remember and keep this in mind because we cannot separate the skin from the body. The skin is a part of the body. In fact, it's the largest organ. Therefore, if you want to have healthy skin, you also have to have a healthy body. Okay. And we all know what a healthy body needs. We need adequate sleep. We need exercise. We need water. We need good nutrition. We need to avoid smoking or excessive alcohol intake. Um, a healthy body will lead to healthy skin. Why? Sleep will give your skin time to repair and to revitalize. Exercise will improve blood flow. To your skin water will replenish your losses um, nutrition well the skin gets nutrition from the body and um, smoking actually decreases oxygenation and it will affect circulation therefore it will also affect the skin so how do we care for the skin as an like an organ so the simplistic way is do we um is one uh, regimen same for all? Or do we have skin types? Um, do we have different skin care for different skin types? So um, let's see. So the basic skin types that we know are these. So the normal skin, the dry skin, the oily skin, the sensitive skin, and you basically know what um, are the descriptions of each and you probably know what you are however what i always tell patients is that most of us are not just one skin type we're all mixed skin types even i who i think i'm very dry um i still get oily at the t-zone sometimes and i still get pimples once in a while because we are really mostly mixed skin types um we're normal to dry elsewhere like on the cheeks no but we're oily here in the t-zone and sometimes we do get acne we're we're all capable of getting pimples because we all have the structures for that we're all we all have the bacteria that causes acne so it's it's possible for all of us to develop that. Sometimes we do get sensitive and um, sometimes that's a function of other factors like um, uh, your, your, your overall general health. You know? So skin care should be individualized. Um, there's no actually one type of skin care for everyone. Um, you really should analyze your skin and see if you're oily here, you're oily here, or just oily here, or you're just dry, no? Um, so you really have to um, learn to uh, be attuned to what your skin needs. But what is basic skin care? So this one I can help you with. Basic skincare, according to cosmeceuticals, okay, what is a cosmeceutical first? Cosmeceuticals are pharmaceuticals or for, um, drug companies that produce cosmetic products with pharmaceutical grade ingredients, meaning they have a little medication in them, but they're not... Um, they don't need a prescription. They can be bought over the counter but they have a little medication to treat mild skin conditions. So examples of these are the anti-aging creams, the serums, and the moisturizers. No? Um, so what 
according to the cosmeceuticals, sorry, are the steps in a basic skincare program. So there are four basic steps, and that's cleansing, toning, moisturizing, and sun protection. Before, I used to only say these three, but over the years, we realized that sun protection is actually the more important step. No? Okay. What is cleansing? So cleansing is removing the dirt, the makeup, or the excess oil from your skin. Um, it may exfoliate the skin, but only the top layer, which is the stratum corneum, or that's the topmost layer of the um, epidermis. So it's not the whole epidermis, but the topmost layer of the epidermis. So how do we choose a cleanser? And how do we do cleansing? So I always tell patients this, um, the most important thing is cleansing is to do it gently and to avoid over cleansing. Some people wash their faces three, four times a day. That's not also good for the skin because when you wash, you don't only remove dirt, makeup or excess oil, you actually strip off all the natural oils and the top layer of the skin, diba? Right? So you're going to injure the skin and dry it out if you overdo it. And um, in choosing the products, uh, um, just choose products that don't irritate your skin. My golden rule for patients, it's trial and error, but my golden rule for patients is that um, Avoid as much as possible using scrubs because then you may injure the skin. However, if for very oily patients, I do not actually 100% discourage this. Um, for very oily patients, I do allow them to use scrub. I just tell them to use it very gently. The next step is toning. So what does toning do? Toning ensures thorough cleansing. It removes whatever your cleanser was not able to remove. So as to prepare the skin for the next steps, no? Um, it can be used also as a vehicle for some active ingredients. So for example, there are some toners with exfoliating agents like AHA, BHA, or antibacterials like lindamycin, witch hazel, or whitening in, um, lightening ingredients. No? So it can be used also as a medication. So, But in toning, you have to remember that it's not needed by everyone. And you may not even need it on your whole face. So if you're mixed type, you may you can actually just tone on your T-zone and avoid the rest of the skin. As a general rule, I tell patients to start on their T-zone because we already know that that's oilier than most of the skin. And then to go last to the cheeks. No? Um, uh, in the era of Eskinol, the tendency was to over clean, over clean, and over dry out the cheeks. And we normally, uh, as a habit, would start there. Um, but the cheeks, like I said, is drier usually than the rest of the skin. So toning, whether it's an alcohol-free toner or an alcohol-containing toner, even just water diba, can dry out your skin. Also, I tell patients with toning to be very careful because toning is an abrasive action. So it's just like scrubbing. So if you do it very vigorously, you will also injure your skin. Okay, next. The third step, like we said, is moisturizing. So what does this do? It restores the moisture barrier of the skin that was stripped off with cleansing and toning. It protects against water loss. So it will improve also the appearance of the skin. It will look smoother and um, shinier, so glossier. It will, it will actually reflect light better, so it will look brighter. Um, moisturizers can also be used as vehicles for some active ingredients. And um, like the toners, you can use exfoliants, vitamins, or lightening agents in them. 
So like the exfoliant, you have to, uh, like the toner, you have to choose the right kind for your skin. So if you're very oily, we don't want a really heavy moisturizer. You can use something that is gel or water-based, no? Um, but if you're dry, we want the heavy moisturizers. We want the cream. So sometimes I find it funny that those who are dry skin will use um, like a water-based or an aloe vera-based moisturizer, which is too light for their skin type. No? Um, when using uh, moisturizers with ingredients, eh, we have to be careful also because um, this may be irritating to some skin types or to some parts of your face. Sun protection, like I said, is one of the most important steps, no? if not the most important. No? Um, sun protection protects us from sunburn and tanning, but more importantly, it protects us from photoaging and skin cancer. It's usually in a cream form, so maybe moisturizing as well. So sometimes I tell patients, you can skip your moisturizer in the morning if you're already wearing a cream-based um, sunscreen. So uh, we, you need to choose an appropriate sunscreen based on your skin type. So there are sunscreens that are um, sprays or water-based or gel-based that can be used by patients who are very oily. But again, for those who are dry, it's best to use the cream base. And then with activity, of course, we want to use the thicker, the ones that are water resistant, um, so that they will protect you longer. Okay, what are the frequently asked questions in skincare? Do I need all these steps? How do I know what to use? Do I have to consult first a dermatologist? Or can I try already some products? Should I trust TV infomercials, ads, or magazine articles? Or even um, now the vloggers, should we trust them? Um, maybe, maybe not. No, because Of course, some of them get free treatment in exchange for that. So what I always tell patients um, in basic skincare is it has to be basic. So it has to be simple, easy, convenient for you, practical, and most useful. So it has to be something that you can sustain and something you can do regularly. So for me, the most basic of the skincare steps will be adequate cleansing. Of course, we have to clean out all those oil and dirt from our skin. Um, but uh, I always tell patients that um, all cleansers work, no? so whether it's a, um, a cleanser that does not lather, like, um, you know, the more, more popular brand that does not lather, that still works, or it, a cleanser that is moisturizing, it will still work. Um, all cleansers work. No? So normally cleansers in general have surfactants in them that already bind the dirt, um, whether you use something that um, makes you dry or not, no? whether it lathers or not. And then, so this is the most important and sun protection. So for me, these are the two most important steps for everyone. Um, as Especially in the past, uh, uh, the latter part of the 20th century, we realized that skin aging is actually primarily, primarily due to photo damage. Um, so it's very important to include sun protection in your skincare regimen. And then, depending on your needs, if you're very oily, you can add some toner. If you're very dry, you can add more moisturizers. If you have acne or dermatitis, you can use like a repairing barrier cream or you can use for acne, acne medications like benzoyl peroxide. It will really depend on what your skin needs. 
We also have to remember that the skin changes with age and with time. So I always like to emphasize this to patients because they always tell me na, I don't think, doctor, I, uh, no, I don't think the problem is with my cleanser because I've been using that for 10 years and I've never had problems. So what I always tell patients is you were ne you're not the same. Um, in fact, even yesterday and today, you're not the same. Of course, the difference may be very subtle, but with time, your skin changes. So there really are natural changes to the skin and we have to be alert to that and attuned to that. And there may be times that you will um, need different products and you may not be able to use your regular products. Factors that affect the skin um, strongly um, are these factors. No? So especially during puberty, there's a very big change in the skin. We all know that there's increased oil gland and sweat gland activity in pregnancy. There's special skin care for pregnant patients because there's also a difference in the skin during this time. And menopause, when we lose the hormones, the skin gets especially dry. No? With activity and with sun exposure, we have to choose different different products no, depending on um, your activity. So if you're sedentary at home, you don't need a really strong cleanser. I always tell patients that eh, you're not naman a construction worker, so you don't need a really strong facial wash or a really strong or a really strong um, uh, toner. Um, stress or illness will also change your the needs of your skin. And of course, diet and sleep we know affects the skin. In fact, um, some patients who diet will get sometimes very dry or some patients who diet will, will may also develop acne on the skin. Some patients who diet may actually lose their hair. No? And sleep we know has a major, fact, a major effect also on the skin. Um, whether especially change in weather um, or climate will also uh, grossly affect your skin or change in environment. So sometimes it's because all of a sudden the environment you're living in is different and that's the reason why your skincare has to be changed also. Okay, so now let's go to skin aging. Let's go to pathology. We know that skin aging is inevitable. It's a series of changes that occur over time and we can't stop it. It happens to everyone, whether it's the skin or the rest of the body. It will happen eventually. No? But we do know also that there is an in interaction of genetics and environment in um, skin aging. Um, even the most good-looking will age. No? And we see that um, even here in Brad Pitt. No? What happens in skin aging? There's increasing signs in the skin like wrinkles, dryness, and laxity. So I always tell these patients, as you get older, your skin will get drier. And then as it gets drier, um, you'll also develop wrinkles and laxity. In your 20s, your skin will be nice it will be soft firm supple but in your 30s you start to develop fine lines and wrinkles dark spots and pigmentations in your 40s your skin starts to droop and then it sags along the jaw the jawline and you develop jowls no and then in your 50s you lose volume so that's what i was mentioning earlier as you get older you lose volume here and then you start appreciating now the fat in your face like me. So now I appreciate the fat in my face because as you get older, you lose the volume here. And as you lose the volume here, it drops here. It actually drops here to your jowls and here. And that's the way the crease here becomes emphasized. No? And then your neck, your neck starts and your chin start to merge together. Na parang wala ka ng Baba, no? So eventually, they will start to merge together. Why does this happen? Because there is a decrease in collagen production. There's a decrease in skin elasticity, a loss of moisture, a loss of fat, and even bone. So this will happen with age. 
with skin aging, we also develop pigmentation aside from the wrinkles. We also see increased blood vessels as the skin thins, so the blood vessels start becoming more prominent. We also develop these various skin lesions. So there's many things that you develop. You can develop, I'm sure you're familiar with syringoma. Um, you're de this one is seborrhea keratosis. No? So we develop warts. We develop um, oil glands, sweat glands, um, oil deposits on the skin. So there are a lot of things that come out as you age. And we also note that there is poorer or slower healing. If before it only took you two, three days for your skin to heal, now it's going to take two weeks. No? So it will be slower as your skin ages. Um, skin aging is divided into two um, types. And like I mentioned earlier, there is a genetic predisposition. There is the true intrinsic aging, which is universal, inevitable, and it will happen. Even if you are locked in your room or your house, it will happen. Um, and this is a function of your genes. This is true intrinsic aging. But there is also photo aging, which is extrinsic, and it's caused by long-term sun exposure primarily. And I always tell patients that tell patients that eighty percent of it will happen before you're eighteen. Why? Because you're not yet conscious about skin care. And the sun damage to the skin is cumulative. It adds up over time, but most of it will happen early when you don't care that you're under the sun because your skin is so nice, panaman, so you don't really care. Um, you start caring when the when the wrinkles and the pigmentation start coming out. But then that's already an accumulation of all the damage that has happened over the years. So aside from sun exposure, smoking, 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 I have to emphasize this, also causes premature skin aging. Of course, also if you're very, um, uh, uh, what's this, animated, if you have, um, like to do uh, when you talk, you like to move your face a lot or you laugh a lot. So it will cause eventually lines and wrinkles on your face. And then there's gravity, which um, also we cannot do anything about. But most of this, like sun exposure and smoking, can be prevented and we can do something about it. We cannot completely um, stop it, but we may be able to slow it down. I like to show this picture. Um, it's always shown to show the emphasis of photo aging on the skin. This guy is a truck driver and um, this is the right side of the skin. This is the left. And we know that if you drive, it's your left side that is exposed outside. It's the one on the window side. And a, a truck driver like him will be driving many hours, many hours on the road. And um, despite that, um, you will see how, how much different the age skin how much age the skin has become on the left side of his face. And this is um, extrinsic um, skin aging. And um, so we know how important it is to protect from UV radiation. But what is this UV radiation? So we know that the sun emits different rays. Visible light is the one that helps us see. But it's ultraviolet light, which is most concerning for us because it's the one that um, damages the skin. So for us, UVA and UVB, are our concerns, UVC not so much because um, it is still filtered by our ozone layer. But for Australians, where there are already holes in their ozone, or the ozone is thin, um, even UVC is already a problem and can cause all the damages that the other ultraviolet rays do as well. So how does it damage the skin? Um, the effect on the skin is dependent on the frequency of exposure, the length, the intensity of the radiation, and your skin type. No? So these are all factors that we know affect also the damage to the skin. Acute effects of ultraviolet radiation will be burning or tanning. 
the chronic effects are the ones that we don't like. That's the premature aging. So we like showing this picture of an igorot. No? Why? Because um, they live in a high altitude where it's cold, so they probably don't use um, protective gear. And then they're closer to the sun. So um, and they will actually age faster because of that. No? And that's the reason why um, we can see in the skin of this eagle how much wrinkling has happened. Um, also, their uh, uh, livelihood is primarily farming, right? So um, that's also one reason why um, the aging is more prominent in them. So the chronic effects aside from aging will be pigmentary disorders. And what we fear are the precancerous and the cancerous lesions on the skin like this one. Um, effects on the skin depend on the skin type, like I said. So here, this is more um, clinical. Um, earlier, it was more cosmeceutical. No? This is more clinical. We know that fairer people are more at risk of skin damage um, as compared to someone with darker skin. Um, we know that our melanin is protective. No? So um, this Fitzpatrick scale is a gauge that we use, especially when we do treatments in the clinic. No? Um, type 1 skin type are those that always burn and they never tan whereas type six are those that never burn but always tan filipinos in general are here in the type four and the type five type five type we um rarely burn but we mostly tan okay so how does UV damage the skin? It's through the creation of free radicals. What are they? They're high energy molecules like this that are very, very unstable so that they are able to disrupt our DNA and the collagen in our skin. So that's what they do. And when they do that, they destroy the normal structure and function of the skin. So like here, you can see this one is under immunofluorescence, but you can see already that the skin, the epidermis, which is this, is very thin already. It has lost the normal pattern, which is the, we call it the retoriges or that wavy pattern. And then the dermis, look at the collagen, it's all broken up and disarrayed. You know? So this is what it does to the skin. So when it does this, it will induce the, the, this um, consequences, which we mentioned earlier. Skin also, um, UV rays also cause pigmentation on the skin. Um, and I just wanted to show this to, different, to differentiate the different types of pigmentation on the skin. Um, we're familiar with freckles. There are small brown spots on the skin, very small on sun-exposed skin, and they fade. They're usually seen in light-skinned individuals. No? So if there's a genetic um, predisposition for this, but it fades when you're out of the sun. Unlike sunspots, sunspots are irregularly sized. They're small also, but they're irregularly sized. They're on sun exposed skin. They don't fade. They, in fact, increase in darkness and thickness over time. And then melasma, another pigmentation and concern on the skin, causes big brown patches on the skin, usually here on the cheek, cheekbone, because the cheekbone is bony. So it, it's really one of the first areas that the sun hits. On the forehead, but normally women don't get it so much because we have hair that protects the forehead. On the nose, whether in, whether in here on the upper lip or on the other parts of the face. It's triggered by sun exposure, but we have to keep in mind that melasma is also triggered by hormonal factors like pregnancy and oral contraceptive pills. So this is why I emphasized earlier that primary prevention of aging and one of the most important steps in skincare is photo protection. Okay. But photo protection is not only sunscreen. Okay. Photo protection is also using hats, shades, umbrellas. Filipinos are, are um, 
okay with this and they're used to using this. So it's not only using sunscreen and it's also not only using sunscreen when you go to the beach. It's using sunscreen all the time. And that's the reason why many moisturizers now have sunscreen already in them or even makeup. Most makeups now, even lipsticks, have sunscreen in them already, you know, um, because we need that protection on a regular basis. And then hats, shades, umbrellas also help in clothing and avoiding the midday sun. But avoiding the midday sun, I would like to emphasize only protects us from UVB because UVB peaks at this time. So UVB will start low, then it will peak at this time. And that's why we feel the burning on the skin. So it's UVB that's primarily the cause of burn. And that's what we avoid. But all the other changes like skin aging and pigmentation, especially pigmentation, is primarily caused by UVA. And then skin aging and skin cancers is caused by both or all three actually. And um, so, um, UVA is a uh, more tricky to protect against because it does not peak. Its levels at 6 a.m., 6 p.m., and noontime are all the same. And that's the reason why I tell patients, you have to, basta you're going out, you have to put already your sunscreen or wear a hat. So some people, kasi like now, they're at home, they're tamad to put on their sunscreen. At least wear a hat if you're going to go out to get something or you're going to go out to um, water your plants. Wear a hat. No, so to protect yourself at least, okay? Um, photo protection is one way to prevent um, aging. However, uh, other ways, which we mentioned also earlier, are antioxidants. So what are antioxidants? These are your vitamins. And glutathione, which is not a vitamin, but it also is an antioxidant, actually um, helps in the pre prevention of aging. Um, and again, I will emphasize behavioral changes like a healthy lifestyle and diet um, and avoidance of smoking um, prevents aging. Okay. So in choosing sunscreens, how do we choose our sunscreen? So like I said, an effective sunscreen must protect against both UVA and UVB, at least for us. We must apply it at least 20 minutes before sun exposure. And we must put adequate amounts uh, on our skin. So what is adequate? They say a teaspoon is enough for your face and your neck. So a teaspoon. So there's a teaspoon rule. So a teaspoon for the face and the neck, a teaspoon for the each arm, and then two teaspoons for the trunk. So, so that's the teaspoon rule. So we have to put adequate amounts and we have to reapply constantly because it will not protect you all throughout the day unless your exposure is very short, then yes, one time may be enough. Um, and if your skin type is on the darker side, yes, maybe one time may be enough. But if you're fair or if you have activity where you sweat or you swim, you need to apply more often because there's no such thing as truly water resistant. It will also wash off, so you have to reapply. So in choosing sunscreen, sunscreens, we have two types. No? We have the chemical sunscreens, which absorb light, and the physical sunscreens, which block and reflect light. Okay, so the... Um, my hard and fast rule is choose a broad spectrum sunscreen. So... Many naman will claim that they're broad spectrum sun schemes, but you can be more, um, you can investigate more by checking their components, no? Um, and uh, if they protect against UVB and UVA, they will actually write um, something there that will tell you that it is protective. So this is a test for UVB protection, it's called the SPF or sun protection factor. And it will range between 15 to 50 plus, sometimes higher, but in most countries, they don't anymore write if it's above 50, they'll just write plus, 50 plus. No? So, and this one is not strength. 
it's actually a gauge of how fast you will burn. No? Kasi diba, like I said, UVB causes burn. So it, it will depend on your skin type pa rin, no? So for example, um, for an average Filipino, like my skin type, which is maybe skin type 4 to 5, no? um, an SPF of 50 will already protect you for 6 to 8 hours. An SPF 50 though will only protect you for mga two hours so it's not a it's not a times times it's not a multiply it's not a multiplication factor but it it's somewhat linear okay um uva will also already show in the sunscreen if it's a good sunscreen so most sunscreens um the at least the good ones already test for uva also and we call it um ultraviolet a protection factor but it's usually labeled as either apf or pa plus and the number of pluses so it's not numerical but the number of pluses will give you a clue to how protective it is for example this one so it's spf 50 plus and then the pa is plus four okay physical sunscreens on the other hand are physical so they're like barriers on the skin so they're cosmetically less appealing they're usually the ones that are white so they're the ones that are water resistant they're the ones that we use for swimming um, so since they're like barriers, they protect against UVA, B, and C already. And the effectiveness is dependent on the concentration. So many sunscreens like these have already tried to improve the cosmetic um, uh, appeal to the skin. No? So because now we don't like being too white, some will put it in micronized, uh, put it micronized or in vehicles so that it's initially white when you put it but then it fades into the skin okay antioxidants like we mentioned earlier are the vitamins they could be oral or even topical or IV, we all know about that also. Basically, like we said, their mode of action is to absorb the free radicals that is formed when sun hits the skin, preventing it from causing its damage on the DNA or on the collagen. Together, they work synergistically. So antioxidants and sunscreens work together. The sunscreen will prevent the ray from reaching the skin, but because it's a screen, so we don't normally say sunblock anymore now because there's no true sunblock. It will only screen the rays. There will still be some rays that will enter into the skin and um, the antioxidant then will prevent the damage um, that is caused by this residual radiation. Okay, so after prevention, let's now go to treatment of aging skin. So how do we treat um, aging skin. So we treat skin by um, using um, exfoliating agents and, whiten and whitening agents. Okay, what are exfoliating agents? They're the, they're the agents that peel the skin. So how do they make your skin look better? It will even out um, the and smoothen out the skin by peeling the uneven layers. And then it will make it, since it's smoother, it will make it reflect light better so it will look also brighter. So the most common exfoliating agents are these, tretinoin, AHA, and BHA. Tretinoin is still the gold standard standard exfoliating agent. Um, uh, alpha hydroxy acids are fruit acids and BHA or salicylic is very useful in acne. However, exfoliating agents don't only peel the skin. They actually, so that's why their treatment is because they remove pigmentation, they remove the scars, so they remove the ugly stuff from the surface. But they also stimulate collagen regeneration because as they peel the skin, your skin sees it na parang, oh, 
para tayo na sugatan ng konte so because you um the because there is a little injury to the surface of the skin it will stimulate your collagen to repair and that's why exfoliating agents will eventually improve the appearance of scars even depressed scars okay why do agents um, help exfoliating agents, especially in decreasing pigmentation or lightening agents? No? So they primarily do this by tyrosinase inhibition, which is an enzyme that converts tyrosine to melanin in the skin. So it prevents conversion of tyrosine to melanin. But the existing pigment there is still there. So the exfoliating agents and the whitening agents actually also work synergistically the exfoliating agents will remove the existing pigmentation or scars and then the whitening agents will prevent um, more pigmentation of the whitening agents the gold standard is hydroquinone but because there are side effects with this although rare um there are a lot of um, whitening or lightening agents that have come out in the market and some are uh, fruit or plant-based like these ones. Okay, now let's go to treatment uh, modalities in the clinic. So how do we treat um, changes in the skin because of aging, whether intrinsic or extrinsic um, in the clinic? So um, we also use exfoliating procedures, so like chemical peels or microdermabrasion like the diamond peel. So this is a chemical peel and this is a diamond peel. Basically, it will exfoliate deeper the skin, removing um, thicker layers of the stratum corneum of the epidermis, just that part, the top part. But because it will stimulate deeper, it will also repair deeper. So there's more collagen regeneration um, and repair um, with treatments. Okay. Light therapy is also very useful in treating skin aging. Um, there are many forms like the intense pulse light or the IPL and the lasers. The fractional laser is very, very exciting. It's one of the more exciting lasers in the past um, maybe 10 years no, or 20 years. So why is it exciting? Because it is an ablative layer, uh, a laser. So it's an ablative light therapy that induces deeper um, injury to the skin, stimulating deeper um, repair. Unlike a peel, which will only exfoliate this top layer, this is the epidermis, right? So it will only exfoliate the upper part of the epidermis. This one will go all the way down. And um, uh, that's why it's called the fractional laser is because it is fractionated into pinpoint um, uh, dots or holes into the skin. So the damage to the skin is very minimal, but the effect in the healing is um, very dramatic. The Q-Switch NDAG is one of our newer lasers. We have this in the Skin and Body Clinic. It's also one of those lasers that don't that doesn't damage the upper surface of the skin, but actually um, penetrates into the skin to stimulate collagen regeneration and repair. And it can target actually pigmentation very well. Okay. Energy-based devices are not very new. I'm sure some of you are familiar with them, but they're very helpful also in treating um, uh age skin and they do this by also inducing um uh, injury to the skin but here instead of light they use thermal heat uh, thermal energy or intense heat to induce that um uh, damage to the uh, skin and stimulate collagen regeneration and repair uh, because we use high heat here 
there is more repair, no? Um, and in radio frequency, there is bulk heating. So the risk only with the radio frequency is that you will actually you can actually cause um, um, some pigmentation or damage on the upper part of the skin. HIFU, which is the newer um, technology or high intensity um, focused ultrasound, goes deeper into the skin and it's also fractional. It's a fractionated. So it goes this layer, it can go deeper to this layer and it can go deeper this layer all the way to the muscular layer. And because of that, it is one of the treatments that is being pushed now, not only for um, repair, but also for skin tightening and lifting of the skin. So you can see here, there is some skin tightening and lifting. Okay. Other treatment modalities, although um, they're a little bit more invasive, are also very effective in treating aged skin. So why are they appealing? It's because they have immediate results. No, Unlike the previous treatments that I mentioned, um, since they, the previous treatments that we mentioned induce skin repair, they will take a little time and they will take a, a few sessions. They won't take just one, sessions, one session and then it will take a series of um, treatments to induce that repair and the repair will be seen over time. But for some patients, they want instant gratification and for, for that, these are the best treatments for that. Botulinum toxin, which um, uh, uh, reversibly um, relaxes the facial muscles, improves wrinkles, not only on the forehead, but even here around the crow's feet, crow's feet or the eyes, and even here around the lips. So that will improve the wrinkling. Fillers, on the other hand, will fill the areas. Like if you look at this patient, she already lost volume here. That's why her eye bags became so prominent. But it's not actually that her eye bags became larger, but because she lost volume on the upper part of her face. So with fillers, you all of a sudden see na, she's starting to look fuller and um, younger. Okay. And then plastic surgery is self explanatory. Okay. So, in summary, what did we learn today? We learned that taking care of the skin is just as important as taking care of the other organs of the body. That there are many products which can help protect and preserve the health of our skin. And that skin care is not just a matter of vanity or beauty. Good skin care actually helps prevent diseases like cancers and dermatitis. And it helps our mental health because if you look good, you also feel good. Lastly, as a reminder, find the proper products for your specific needs. So trial and error still helps. So it's good that some products you can, there are trial sizes so you can try. Um, expensive is not always better, although usually the expensive ones have um, very good research that back them up. Have a good relationship with your dermatologist or your skin consultant. So it's important that you have someone that you can talk to. It's like having an OB or an internist. So it's important that you have a good relationship with your doctor so that they can help you find the right treatment or the right regimen to suit your lifestyle and your budget. Remember that skincare is an investment. Thank you and good day. Okay.
There you go. I thought I was on. I unmuted myself. Okay, thank you so much, Doc Putsi, for that wonderful talk. We learned a lot. Definitely, we learned a lot from your topic, especially me, <laughs> when it comes to usage of the, the different direct acids and then also different um skincare essentials. So now we are now opening the floor for the Q and A. So to facilitate our Q&A, may I call on Dr. Pauline Faustino, Assistant Manager of Medicard Onsite Clinic Management and Health Promotion. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, Dr. Goodsy. Am uh, I still clear? Because actually my screen disappeared. But yes, I can hear you, so I'll just answer if I can. I can't see you anymore, though. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so Dr. You're still here, naman pa. Okay. So, Dr. Thank you for the guidance okay. that you've provided yeah. nga, uh, for us in taking care of our skin. And I'm sure there are a lot of misconceptions that have been clarified by the information that you have provided. Uh, I'd like to also invite Ms. Bam. We have, have a lot of Managing Director of Skin and Body by Medicard to join us in the Q&A. So, we'll be uh, the ones to pitch out the questions to Dr. Woods. Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining us with our talk today. Yeah, so I'll read the first question. Uh, look, I have here uh, a direct message. Uh, is it possible for someone to have a good skin even without having a skin regimen? Oh, those are the blessed. I said. So there are some people who are really blessed. Um, uh, that uh, genetically, they don't really, uh, they're not prone to pigmentation. Genetically, their, um, their skin is well protected, parang it has good moisture, and um, uh, the wrinkles don't appear very fast. No? So there are some people who are blessed like that. Pero eventually, like I said, there is intrinsic aging. So there's no such thing as you won't. Eventually, meron at merong lalabas. It may not be as fast as other people. Um, lifestyle, like if you're always out under the sun, if you do sports. So I get patients, actually male patients, who come to me with um, uh, pigmentation on their skin, not necessarily on the face, but maybe on the arms. Um, and it's like a, a matted pigmentation. It's not only brown, it's also white, and it's differ differing pigmentation. And I tell them that's actually already sun damage. No? And that happens. So sun damage is not only um, the brown pigmentation. You can also have differing colors on the skin. No? Um, as Filipinos, though, we're more concerned about the brown pigmentation. But especially on the arms, which we usually don't protect, you'll see there that um, it can happen and it will happen. There are areas that you can't hide. So there's some people who wear makeup and the makeup becomes like a barrier or or especially now like i said some makeup will have already sunscreen in them pero even the makeup itself is a barrier eh? and that's the one reason why women don't age as fast as men no diba men talaga will age faster because they don't put anything on their skin um at least most men no pero women because they put makeup even the makeup already acts like a barrier so that will slow down the aging a little um, a, a follow-up to that, Doctor. Uh, when should one start a skin regimen? How early? Should oh, as early as Since possible. Oh, mm -hmm. as early. Even for my son, my son um does soccer, and I really um emphasize to him how important it is to wear the sunscreen. No, so it's hard to make them use it all the time. Pero at least man lang when they go out under the sun, but if maarte like a girl and they want to wear sunscreen already why not there are sunscreens that are meant for kids and you can try those products no miss mandy would you like to read uh, some questions you're a mute man wait huh um, there's actually one question here that we covered during our Skin Tita segment. Uh, 
before that, I would like to invite everybody to to check out our FB and uh, IG pages for more information about the skin clinic. There was a question here regarding uh, the exposure of the blue light in your computer and uh, yeah. your interior lights, if this will oh, yeah. damage yeah. the skin. Yes. yes. So there are studies already. In fact, there are local studies that show that, yes, they do affect, no? So um, it's not as fast as UV radiation, but yes, they do have some, they also cause free radical formation and damage to the skin as well. Um, that's the reason why um, for patients with pigmentation already, um, basically when you have pigmentation already or damage already, I tell them, you know, that's just a sign that your skin has already reached its, its limit. So because of that, you have to wear na talaga your sunscreen every day, even indoors. And like I mentioned earlier, if you caught it, sorry, major information overload. But if you caught it later, I mentioned that UVA is as damaging as UVB. And it's much more tricky because it does not peak. So hindi mo siya feel so its level in the morning, noon time, and at night is the same. And it's actually quite smart because it actually can penetrate through glass, like with the truck driver, although his window may have been open. But even with a closed window, it can penetrate through glass. So I tell patients that even at home, if your windows are very huge, um, there's still some sunlight that's coming into your um, house. So if you have already problems, don't ano, don't be complacent already. You really have to wear your sunscreen even at home. This is very apt for uh, the new normal where everybody does um, online schooling and work from home. So remember the sunscreen, everybody. <laughs> Uh, there's also one question here. Uh, this is very interesting also, Bootsy. Uh, what are the best treatment? Uh, what are, what's the difference between beauty boutiques in the malls and derma clinics? Again, this is a very common question that uh, a lot of people ask. Because there are a lot oh, of yeah, I think aesthetic we... clinics and uh, derma yes. clinics. Yes. Okay, the difference is that um, a dermatologist studied medicine and then after medicine another three years of um, dermatologic residency so the difference will be a dermatologist will be able to identify those minor changes in the skin that may be a skin facialist or a skin um, specialist who is not a dermatologist will not be able to identify no so th that's the um, minor but major difference as well. So um, maybe for facials or for minor procedures, it's okay to go there. No? But um, if you have skin concerns, uh, it's best if you see first a doctor. And so I think it clarifies uh, the question, the difference between a dermatological clinic and an aesthetic clinic. Yes. Um, Dr. Butsi, here's a question. I think uh, this is also common to most of our participants. Uh, what would you recommend for oily or acne-prone skin? I think this was also touched earlier, but uh, maybe to emphasize. What was the question again? Uh, the best uh, combination for oily and acne-prone skin. Okay. What do you recommend? So you have to have a good cleanser, number one. And then if the acne is very active, I don't recommend using um, uh, scrubs. No? So sometimes I do allow patients to use a scrub because sometimes the beads are vehicles also for certain ingredients like salicylic. No? Sometimes there are some washes that have salicylic and the beads are the vehicle. So in those cases, I tell patients to just apply 
melt it on your hand and then apply it to your skin. I don't want to waste kasi lalo na for patients. I always ask patients, what do you have? Because I don't want to waste what you have, di ba? If you can use it and I think you can use it, I will teach you how to use it. No? So, one, you have to have a good cleanser and cleansers are trial and error. You have to make sure that the cleanser does not overly dry you because he, you will have a difficult time with the next steps already if you're dry already in the start pa lang. So you're going to have a hard time with the other steps. Why? Because number two, the toner. The toner um, is uh, to remove excess oil or sometimes nga, the toner can have uh, medication in them like antibiotics uh, or even AHA. No? So it helps um, the actual medication then the third will be the actual medication the actual medication is the most important in acne so after the cleanser it's the medication that's important whether your medication is um benzoyl peroxide or your medication has tretinoin or aha or bha or salicylic it's the most important because it's the one in the highest concentration and it's the one on your skin the longest. The wash is only on your skin for less than a minute or kung patagalin mo, five minutes. So you don't have to be very particular or very, you don't have to go for the very expensive washes. You can actually mix and match your um, uh, treatments. No? So... Um, the toner is only necessary if um, the patient is very oily or if we need it as a vehicle for another medicine to apply to the skin. And then the sunscreen, oh, I like to specially mention this because in general, um, sunscreen is really important. I don't think I overemphasize that, diba? Pero, um, in patients who have acne, I actually tell them, wag na muna tayo mag problema about the sunscreen. Kasi sunscreen is usually cream-based and it could also be adding to the oil or clogging the pores. No? So I usually tell, tell patients when their acne is very active, um, wag na muna tayo mag sunscreen. Let's just stick to the medications first. When we are already healing, and then we can um, uh, start using a little moisturizer. Let's use something with a little sunscreen. In the meantime, I usually just tell them just avoid na lang the sun, please, because all the medications of acne have a tendency to dry the skin. So you don't want the other parts to be drying also. So all of those medications will already dry your skin. So if your skin gets through too dry, you will be prone naman to irritation. Then you'll need a moisturizer. So, imbis na maging simple yung regimen mo, magiging more complicated kasi kailangan mo na ng moisturizer. Actually, I saw... Of course, it's best for the heart to be checked. Yeah. Yeah. I saw an interesting question dito because you mentioned in your lecture, Bootsy, about a uh, healthy lifestyle. So there's a question here. Any food suggestions to maintain healthy skin? Ah, it's the same for the body. So I'm also studying, uh, on a side note, I'm also studying Chinese medicine um, at present. And... Um, it's very interesting because it's preventive and it's holistic. And you cannot nga separate the skin from the rest of the body. So um, that's a common mistake, thinking that the skin is parang damit, pwede mong alisen, hindi siya pwedeng alisen. It's really part of the body. So um, you know what is a healthy diet. We all know what is a healthy diet, diba? So it has to have all those colors in it. It cannot be only carbs. It has to have the vegetables. It 
in the fruits because the vitamins and come from there from the vegetables and the fruits and those are the, your antioxidants those are the ones gonna help your organs and your skin as well and then the water intake should be enough you always have to remember i like telling patients this that um the body is created so well by god that it knows how to prioritize no so um your body will use your nutrients first where it needs it most so even for example glutathione i always tell patients it won't go to your skin first it will go first where it's needed most and it might be those critical organs like your liver your kidneys your heart your brain before it will go to the skin and that's the reason why you have to be extra 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 um diligent with your diet and your water intake because huli yung skin eh. So, kailangan talaga enough yung, um, yung diet mo. It has to be really well balanced so that your skin will get a good chunk also of the nutrients. Okay. I read naman one question because um, not related to the food that we take, but uh, the question is about avocado oil moisturizer. What can you say about it? Is it safe to use soba? Avocado cream, the fruit itself. Avocado oil, the para. Ah, oil, the oil. Okay. Yes, there's nothing wrong with using that. All the oils are also moisturizers. I'm a fan of coconut oil, so I like prescribing coconut oil a lot. Um, I feel that coconut oil is underrated because um, it's not a product of the west no it's really more a product of the east that's why it's underrated avocado kasi you can get it in the u.s but coconut oil is really ours so yes oils are good moisturizers as well you can use them as an alternate moisturizer ako i make see the question kasi this pertains to uh, my age bracket <laughs> <laughs> what do you recommend for women of menopausal age on how to care for their face and what basic products should we have? Okay. The main problem... No, it's not. It's just that when you reach menopause, you need more moisturizer. Because when you lose the estrogen, when you lose your hormonal supplement, your, from your, the estrogen from your ovaries, so... Um, you will get dry. So you really expect it that as you hit menopause, your skin will get so much drier. So um, you will need extra moisturization. You still need a good cleanser. You still need a good sunscreen and then less on the toner. And then you can also start the anti-aging. Actually, you can start the anti-aging early. So I mentioned in the anti-aging, um, uh, tretinoin, alpha-hydroxy, beta-hydroxy. You can start that really early. In fact, I have teenagers who are on BHA and AHA early or um, derivatives of tretinoin like retinol, retinaldehyde, or, or adapalene, which is also a um, As you get older, oh, uh, as you get older, you can use stronger products, no? Um, but you have to also play it by ear because stronger products like tretinoin will also dry you more. So you're going to, if you're going to use that, you ha you'll have to moisturize more also. Are there other questions? Actually, uh, there's some more here. Um, this would be interesting also. Um, is it okay to use a toner with AHA or BHA every day? Or is it safe to use two different serums, like 10% niacinamide and an anti-aging serum? Is it all right to use them together? Okay. There's nothing wrong, actually. It will depend on your skin. 
So, I'm assuming wala siyang issues sa skin. Um, pag may issues ka sa skin, then we have to be a little more careful. And every time is always go one at a time. Especially with um, the tensor or the oil. So then you go, yung toner, is it necessary? If you're medyo on the oily side, pwede. If you're not oily but you want the toner because you put on a lot of makeup, you choose the um, alcohol-free toners. So there are alcohol-free toners. And when you use them, don't be too gigil when cleaning your face. Just be very gentle. The purpose is to clean, not to upgrade your <laughs> Yeah. Thanks for that tip, Dr. Clara. <laughs> and then, um, the serum, huh? the serums are like moisturizers. So they're just in serum form. They're like stronger versions of moisturizers. That's why they're serums. Concentrated versions. Siya. So can you use different serums um, at the same time? Yes. Um, as long, uh, kasi usually they're um, like an add-on to your moisturizer. Eh? So, yes, you can. There's nothing wrong with using them. Um, but when you try, nga, lalo na because they're stronger, um, you try them one at a time. Don't use them all at the same time. So, for this week, start with you. So, if you're starting a new regimen, have a cleanser, number one. Then, have a sunscreen, number two. Then you can start a moisturizer at night if you want. But not immediately. You try that maybe after um, a week or two. Kasi, um, depending if your moisturizer is just a moisturizer or if it's a moisturizer with anti-aging in them. So if it's anti-aging, baka ma-irritate ka. So para matansya mo, when you start something that is anti-aging, don't start it every day muna. Try mo siya every other day. Tapos pag okay, then you can build up to every day. And then if you want to add a lightening agent or niacinamide or something else, you can add it. Pero don't add them all sabay-sabay. So that if you react to one, we'll know which one. Kesa sabay-sabay. Makes sense. <laughs> There's also a follow-up here regarding that since school is now done virtually, do you advise children to apply sunscreen protection lotion and of what age. Personally, I actually have my nine-year-old daughter do this as soon as she washes her face before she starts school, not a very light one. And I even have her wear glasses to protect her eyes as well. So do you recommend this, Doctora? Oh, I, ha I have to give you a clap. <laughs> <laughs> Hats off ako. Because um, that is really the idea. But it's very hard to push, right? Um, but yes, that is really the idea. Because like we said, yeah, this um, com gadgets, computers, or even uh, fluorescent bulbs, they actually emit, emit some uh, no, eh, energy. They emit something. So that is the idea. So um, my best example, I always like giving this example to patients. My mother-in-law is like that every single day whether she goes out or not she puts on her sun the moment she wakes up she washes her face puts on her sunscreen and then at night again and then she washes her face puts on pero sa bahay lang siya wala siyang windows so but that's how good she is about so yes that is the idea and the nine-year-old Lalo na that nine-year-old is approaching puberty. Um, some some um, some kids actually get their menses early, so it would be good that she already knows how to take care of herself. Yes, my son actually started using sunscreen very early, also. Okay. In the interest of time, maybe Miss Bambi, we can choose the last three questions. We can yeah. uh, pick this is it. my favorite. <laughs> this, is closing, uh, this is my favorite question. Among the procedures you mentioned, what is your favorite to render to your patients and why? Okay, Doc Buzi mentioned the beauty of the laser. So <laughs> depends on age. 
depende sa budget. It, it's multifactorial. Um, they're all my favorites. That's why I mentioned them. Um, but uh, I wouldn't have taken the trouble of mentioning them. So when I'm glossing really fast, that means I don't really use them so much. But all these procedures, I do them. And um, they're all good procedures. But it will depend on your age and the current condition of your skin. Um, I like them all. Eh? So it's hard. I have, they're all my favorites, actually. Uh, we have one map. Maybe we can leave this question very insistent. Uh, earlier, you discussed on how to treat acne prone skin, but uh, the question here is for a 10 year old teen what would be a simple treatment or the best treatment for a, a simple prone skin in a 10 year old? Girl or boy? Ma'am, can you uh, mention if it's a girl or boy? A girl that okay, doesn't. Oh yeah. In, in any case, it doesn't matter. Maybe you know our next topics. Um, we can talk about acne, but we can be more in depth with acne, no? Um, pero uh, a good cleanser. So they just really have to clean their skin regularly, maybe twice a day. Tas lalo na kung girl, that's easier easier to advise yan, di ba? Then a boy. Um, important that the, the cleanser is not too strong. So I, especially for girls, I prefer liquid cleansers. I actually like the ones that don't foam because they're gentler on the skin, especially for her age and they're non-comedogenic. No? So meaning they don't cause blackheads and whiteheads. And then I wouldn't, go for a toner immediately. The toner for me is always as an afterthought. Eh. I always add that pagka hindi nag-work yung um, cleanser. So some some kids, cleanser lang okay na eh. Di, kailangan lang pala maglinis ng skin para mawala yung pimples. So some kids. But um, hindi naman din pwede na cleanser ka lang aasa. So I do have some patients who come to me and they tell me they tried everything. And then when I ask them, what have you tried? Puro cleanser lahat. So that's not everything. A cleanser is just a cleanser. It's only there for a short time on your skin. Um, medications wise, my first line always is benzoyl peroxide. I like being benzoyl peroxide because it's an antibacterial. But I teach patients how to use it because some patients will complain that they feel the burning sensation or nangingitim yung skin nila with benzoyl. And it's usually because of overuse. So you really just have to know how to use it, apply it very thinly, ganyan. If naman the pimples are not very active or fresh, um, my other favorite is Adapalin. Um, but it would be really best if I see I see the patient or someone, a dermatologist can see the patient para mas tama or mas age appropriate and mas skin type appropriate yung um, regimen. Right. Maybe one last question. Uh, what about warts on the face and the neck? Is there an over-the-counter yeah. ointment or re remedy for this? What would you suggest? Nah. Go to the clinic. <laughs> none. There's none. But um, you have to remember that warts are viral. So like any virus, um, it cannot survive until it is in inside cells no so it's actually like crystals or dead material no it's inert until it's in an until it is able to enter into the cell so a wart is not alive it will not bite your skin and then it's not like an insect that will bite your skin and enter your skin it cannot enter your skin um it only has that ability when the skin is broken already. So my advice usually to patients who are prone to, to warts is to moisturize generously. Kasi that means your skin is weak, kaya ka nagkaka warts. So, but the, you cannot also um, remove the fact that there are some people who are really prone. No? 
Kaya lang, one way to avoid um, recurrences um, and uh, one way to avoid spreading is to moisturize, not scrub. Kasi if you scrub, like in the neck, you're actually just causing injury and causing spread. That's why sometimes pag nag ganyan ka scratch, hilihirera sila. Talagang sunod-sunod kasi nasugatan yung skin, they're able to penetrate. Moisturize. And my favorite, like I mentioned, is coconut oil. Um, I like using that because it has antiviral properties. And that's the reason it's, beca it's becoming popular, diba? especially now for COVID. In fact, some people use it as a gargle. Some people drink it. I actually like applying it to the skin because it, it's antiviral. So it won't protect only against COVID. It will also protect you from warts. Okay. But when the warts are there, na, the chances of it to shed um, will depend on your immune system. So if you're younger, it may shed. If you're older, it may have a harder time shedding or disappearing. So um, the, the topicals are more helpful for prevention than for treatment. Don't use um, over-the-counter treatments. You may cause damage to your skin, lalo na for small um, flat warts. Usually, the ones that are medications that you can buy are meant for the large warts that you get on your hands and feet. Yeah, it's still best to seek a consult na po, the para po. Yes. So that there will be proper evaluation and the doctor can prescribe the best medicine. Okay. So before we close, Akaya, maybe some uh, closing words. Uh, first from Dr. Butsi and then followed by Ms. Van. Um, thank you so much for listening. I hope you learned something. Um, remember that dermatologists are doctors too. So we, we really try to give you the best that we can. Um, hopefully, if you have time, come visit us your, if you're medical clients. Um, we have dermatologists in the main um, uh, medical clinics. Not only me, uh, there's a good roster of dermatologists in the other clinics. Um, but yeah, visit the dermatologist soon if you have any other questions. Same with Dr. Bootsy, we'd like to invite everybody to visit us in our uh, clinics. We have one in located in our Medicard Lifestyle Center in Makati, in Centris, and in Festival Mall, Alabang. So for all your skin needs, for aesthetic, for you to feel good and look good, please come visit us. <laughs> and we will certify you for gorgeous. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, Ms. Van Lee and Dr. Bootsy. So uh, please, we invite everyone to look forward to the future invitations that we have for uh, skin sessions that uh, similar to this. So we know that it has been an interesting topic and we had a lot of participants uh, sending in their questions. So um, yeah. stand by for our future invitations in the succeeding months. So we turn over the screen to play again. Okay, so for our participants, if you want to visit our skin and body clinic, so flash on your screen are the numbers of our of Medicare skin and body. Okay, and thank you very much, Doc Bootsy and Miss Bambi, for gracing our today's talk. So thank you very much. I I know that all of our participants really learned a lot from this topic. Okay, but before we end this talk, we would like to also to invite you tomorrow on our nutritional talk. Take note, tomorrow's talk is not your ordinary talk, but for the first time, you'll see medical nutritionist dietitian prepare healthy snacks and dishes that you can do at home. So watch out for that tomorrow, and I hope to see you all again tomorrow. So ladies and gentlemen, this marks the end of our session. Thank you very much for joining us today.
changes and every day can pass Medicard, Medicard. 